Rishi from the Growing Club, and I'm here with Miss Liza Manelli today. She's our little Bantam, Bantam Frizzle Chicken, and I'm going to show you how we designed and maintain our chicken coop here at the Growing Home. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the hen house. The hen house is the place where the chickens sleep at night and also where they lay their eggs. And it's important you design this correctly so that it's easy to maintain, so that it's easy to clean, and it's comfortable for the chickens. So let's take a look inside and I'll show you the way that we designed ours. So inside the hen house, there's two main things that you want to have. First are the roost bars. So chickens, when they sleep at night, they don't lie down like we do. They, they sit and they squat and they hold on to a branch just like they would if they were sleeping in a tree. And so what we've done is we just literally cut a branch off of one of our trees. We measured it so that it fits into the hen house. And we put these little blocks on the end. And you can, we just set these inside. So the cool thing about having these removable roost bars is that when we want to clean the coop, we can just pull them right out and they're not in our way when we need to scoop all, all this out. The second part of the hen house that's important is the nesting boxes. And the nesting boxes are where the chickens come to lay their eggs. So when you're putting in nesting boxes, there's basically two main things that you need to design for. Chickens like to lay their eggs in small, dark places. They like to have a really closed, um, comfortable, safe, secure place where they can lay their eggs because they want to know that no one's going to come and steal their eggs even though you're going to steal their eggs every day. <laughs> um, so, you know, when you're designing the, uh, the nesting boxes, you just want a small box. Usually the, the recommended measurement is just a foot by a foot by a foot. And then, and that's it. And they'll just crawl in there and they'll lay their eggs. Now, in the hen house, while the chickens are sleeping, the, while they're sleeping is when they're going to poop a lot and actually 50% of a chicken's poop will come out during the night and so you want to have some kind of bedding material down here we're using straw you can also use wood shavings and that straw and wood sh or wood shaving will absorb all that poop that's coming out of them at night and then you're just going to clean this out every you know about every once every two weeks you're going to clean this out and add and replace the straw or you can just keep adding straw for a few weeks and then scoop it all out at once. And like I said, you want to design your hen house so it's really easy to clean. And so that's why we put these two big double doors with this, uh, this levered lock, okay? So I can open up this whole thing and I have easy access to clean the whole space. We also have this little removable piece of lumber here that prevents all of this straw from falling out because as the chickens climb in they tend to kind of throw the straw around and we don't want it to leak out constantly and have to clean up that mess uh, but we do want this to be removable so that when we are cleaning we can just easily scoop all of the straw out you also want to have a little door where you can access the eggs every day easily so I'm going to show you that next so outside here of my chick of my hen house we have our trap egg door and I just lift up my bolt lock here and I reach in and pull out my fresh eggs and for every chicken that you have you'll get approximately one egg a day especially during the summer when they're laying the most uh, and this is just a wonderful you know, this is the best thing about having chickens at home so right here on the opposite side of the egg door we have the door that leads to the chicken run and the chicken run is where the chickens spend most of their day uh, but we use this door to, to let them out in the morning and to lock them up at night so that they're secure from predators so they come out here they walk down or sometimes just jump down into the the run space and the run is where they're going to spend most of their their day and so that's where you're going to keep the feed keep the water and provide enough space for them to be out and to be happy during the during the daytime. The chicken run is the space where the chickens are going to be spending most of their day. So it's important that they have enough space so that they can run around and express their chickenness. 
So the recommendation or the standard um, size is that you have about 10 square feet of run space for every chicken. So our run is three and a half feet wide and about 25 feet long. And currently we have six chickens. We've kept up to 10 chickens in here. So the important part of, of maintaining the run is maintaining, managing the manure that the chickens are going to be pooping throughout the run. If you let that manure accumulate, it's going to start to smell, you're st going to start to get flies, and you're also going to start to invite disease for your chickens. So it's really important that you manage the manure properly. The way that we do it is called the deep bedding method. And in the deep bedding method, what you do is you lay down a layer of straw over the entire run. So let's say you start off with six inches of straw. Then over the course of a few months, depending on how many chickens you have, the manure will start to build up in that straw. The chickens, they'll start to scratch and mix that straw and their poop together. And so you're mixing a carbonous material, the straw, with a nitrogenous material, the chicken poop, and so you're starting to get this, this uh, composting process to happen. Now, when there's too much chicken poop, it, compared to the amount of straw, then you'll actually start to start smelling the poop again. And that's when you wanna add more straw. And so in this deep bedding method that we use, you continually add straw, trying to create a balance between the amount of poop in the, in the run, or poop in the coop, and the amount of straw that's in the coop. And over time, they'll keep mixing these two materials together. And then just about every six months to a year, you'll scoop all of that material out. And what you'll end up with is a really nice compost or mulch that you can use in your vegetable garden or around your fruit trees. Another important part of your chicken run is having some kind of dressing around it. When the chickens are scratching around inside, they tend to throw a lot of that material out. And so if you don't have something to catch it, then it'll start all, it'll all end up outside of the coop. And so I just kind of stapled on some of this burlap. You can use lumber, whatever it is. Just you put something there to catch that material and keep it inside the chicken run. Chickens also like to have little places that, where they can step up off the ground, especially when it's raining. When it's raining, all of the straw will get wet it's a little bit uncomfortable for them, it gets cold. So having a few little tree stumps or any branches, perches where they can jump up and get away from the moisture and the cold is great. You can see Miss Liza, she just likes hanging out, hanging out on top of these stumps in the day. And uh, it's a, a great little addition that makes their life in here much more comfortable. When it comes to giving food and water for your chickens, you don't want to use those silly uh, feeders and waterers that they sell at the feed store. Especially the waterer, um, the one that you know has a little tank and it comes out the sides. That thing, the chickens, they will poop in it, they will throw things in it, they will dirty it up and you have to change that water out and clean it almost every day. It's a mess. So don't use those uh, waterers. What you want to do is set up some kind of tank system using the small red chicken nipples, okay? So what's happening here is that we just use this five gallon bucket, any five gallon bucket will do, and drill the hole in the bottom to which we attached this PVC pipe. And so the PVC pipe brings the water down and at the bottom it has a connection to two small chicken nipples which the chickens just peck at and get their water. This is a vastly superior system to any of the watering systems they sell at the feed stores because there's no way for the chickens to poop in the water, for them to mess up the water, and you have a long-term water supply that you don't need to constantly be refilling. So we fill this up maybe once a week and there's also ways to set these up with the float valve and you just connect your hose to it and you never have to fill up the water 
and your chickens have a constant supply of clean, fresh water. We also have a long-term feeder, a, some, a, a feeder that can store a significant amount of food so we don't have to keep filling it up all the time. So what we've done is we've taken a four inch drain pipe. These are, this is a HDPE drain pipe that you can find at any hardware store. And we, it comes, we put a little Y fitting at the top so that it faces out towards us. And we put the same type of fitting at the bottom facing in towards the chickens. So all I do is I take my feed and I pour it in here and I'll fill this whole thing up. This, this uh, pipe will hold about 20 pounds of feed, which is enough for the chickens for a few days. And then I'll just close it up like this and the chickens are set. They have their feed available to them. And we also supplement them with a lot of greens from the garden like kale and collards and Swiss chard and kind of whatever we have excess of and our, our kitchen scraps. So all the stuff that we cut up and, and toss, toss out while we're making our own food, we throw to the chickens. Here in Southern California, one of the most important things about keeping chickens at home is to make sure they don't get too hot. Uh, especially where we are during the summer, the temperatures can go up to 110 and chickens do not do well at 110 degrees. So what we've done is, to mitigate that is we planted these grape vines that grow on top of the chicken coop. And this is one of the uh, best things you can do for your chickens at home. Because what happens is in the summer when, the, when it starts to heat up, the grapevines leaf out and they provide this nice thick shade coverage for the chickens throughout the summer. And in the winter, because grapevines are deciduous, they drop those leaves and the sunlight is allowed in letting the chickens to get, uh, get warm and get that, that heat from the sun. We've also devised this so that it shades our house during the summer so it goes up from here on the chicken run up to the roof of our house and this grapevine shades our house and drops the temperature in the house. So it does the same thing that it does for the chickens for us. And this is one of the best things that you can do for your chickens here in Southern California. During the rainy season, you want to provide the chickens with some hard covered area too. And so we just put up here on the top of the chicken coop some corrugated panel and that just gives them a little spot where they can keep dry. They actually don't mind the rain too much, so if it's not raining too heavily, you'll see them out and about, but it's good to give them this nice uh, dry space as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video where we showed you some of the, the important features to have in a chicken coop. Chickens are one of the uh, most important parts of a healthy home garden. They provide us with a lot of services. You know, they, they eat our kitchen scraps, they give us really good manure that we can use as fertilizer. They provide us with fresh eggs and companionship. And they're just really cute. And you know, they're weird. They're like these feathered dinosaurs and you have a lot of fun just watching them, you know, peck and scratch at things and fight with each other. So I really encourage everyone to keep chickens at home and I hope you learned something. You can also check out our other video about how to build a chicken tractor which is a movable version of a chicken coop and where we show you all the the entire process of how to build a chicken tractor that's on our website but thank you for watching this video um, you can sign up for our newsletter at our website thegrowingclub.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel thanks for watching hi thanks for watching this video my name is Rishi Kumar and I'm a member of The Growing Club. The Growing Club is a group of individuals and small businesses in Los Angeles working together to create a more equitable and sustainable future. Every month The Growing Club works to educate our members, our local community, and our global community on how to grow food sustainably, regenerate our urban and suburban ecosystems, and create supportive and strong communities. Every month we offer educational community events here in Los Angeles and produce free online learning materials available to anyone. 
If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider joining the Growing Club. Your monthly contribution will help create more videos like this one available to anyone worldwide for free. To join, head to thegrowingclub.com and see how you can become part of our growing community.